Now, a review of banking culture has been ditched by the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, just months after it was launched. It's been seen by many as a sign of the changing attitude from the city watchdog and the Treasury towards the banking industry. So is the era of so-called banker bashing now at an end? Well, I'm joined now by Sir Vince Cable, who was, of course, Business Secretary until May in the coalition government. He's in Chepstow. Very good morning to you, Sir Vince. Well, how do you interpret this uh, ditching of this uh, investigation into banking culture? Well, taken in isolation, it's perhaps not terribly important, but it's if you take it together with all the changes of the last few months, the removal of Martin Wheatley, uh, the stepping down of the commitment to deal more toughly with bankers' liabilities, uh, the uh, retreat from tough anti-corruption uh, law application in the financial services industry, and the rhetoric which uh, both the Chancellor and the Governor of the Bank have been using, uh, you can see that there's a concerted approach to take some of the pressure off the banks. And this is completely wrong because uh, we've seen in the past how dependent the British economy is on banking, how when the banking sector goes down through irresponsibility it has massive consequences and a tough regime of uh, investigation uh, of the kind of thing that the FCA were doing and of regulation is absolutely central. Mm. Well, I mean, we're told um, that it's going to be one-on-one -on -one consultations with the banks. Uh, instead, do you think the overall review ought to be revived? Uh, I, I would certainly like to see it. Uh, I mean, there, of course, there are other people like the, um, House, of, the House of Commons Select Committee, which uh, keep a close eye on, on the banking system. But it's very important that the, regulars are, the regulators are seen to have uh, a tough approach because we see you know, a, a, a cultural problem throughout the banking industry. It's partly a problem with the investment banks, which take excessive risks, the, the old problems with RBS and Barclays, which are probably still there. Uh, and there's also the culture of selling, where uh, staff are incentivized to sell products, which of course led to the abuses around payments protection insurance. That's the cultural problem that this investigation was supposed to pursue. And the problems are still there. So do you think there has been pressure behind the scenes, as many are, are indicating, that uh, the bankers have been talking to the Treasury and saying, well, listen, this isn't really good for business anymore, we've paid enough fines, we've had enough banker bashing, and now we need to get on with business? I'm sure pressure has been brought to bear, and it's clearly working. I mean, in the coalition years, we had a, a balanced approach to the banks. We had a much tougher regulation, requirements to hold more capital, the banks are safer. Uh, George Osborne and I pushed through the reforms which split the uh, investment banks from uh, traditional banking through ring fencing and that legislation went through at the same time being realistic about the, the need for the banks to operate commercially. Now what's happened now is that the, the balance has gone. Uh, the bankers are being listened to, uh, their complaints have been taken on board and a blind eye has been uh, uh, adopted towards abuses in the system. We had evidence only a few days ago that the leading investment banks are not paying taxes here. They're making profits here, but they're not paying taxes here. They're just skimming off large amounts of money. And the traditional argument for having a strong banking industry in the UK is that they paid taxes. Well, you know, we can see that's no longer the case. <laughs> but, Sir Vince, I mean, if we uh, look at that uh, equation, if I can call it that, there's, in the coalition years, there's you, the Chancellor... And the banks, the only thing removed from that equation now is you. So does that mean that uh, George Osborne was always a reluctant participant in the coalition years, in uh, the, uh, the moves against the banks? I think initially he was totally sincere in accepting the fact that we had to have a tough regime in order to make sure we had financial stability and that the banks played a role in supporting the productive side of the economy. But I think as time's passed, uh, the sense of urgency is gone. Uh, but this is the dangerous time because it's when there isn't an immediate threat to the system that the pressure goes off, bad practices creep back in, uh, there's excessive risk-taking and abuse in the investment banking side, banks no longer feel under any pressure from politicians to uh, support productive lending through small business. Now is the crucial time and I, I do worry that the Chancellor and even the Governor uh, no longer appear to have the same degree of motivation to make the banking sector work for Britain.
And this is all about holding the government to account. Uh, and uh, in so many other areas, it's been said that they're not because of the, the nature of the opposition. The Labour Party indulged and preoccupied with so many internal issues. The Lib Dems, your own party, uh, cut to ribbons with only eight MPs. Do you see a way back? And I don't just mean for the Lib Dems. Do you see a way back for those that would hold the government to account? And perhaps it would be some new formation involving your own party and perhaps Labour MPs at some point in the future. Do you see that happening? Well, I do share your analysis. I think we are in danger in the UK of having a one-party state. Of course, it's a different one party in Scotland. But, but throughout the UK, we've got basically Conservative government not under any real challenge. Uh, I think the, the Corbyn-led Labour Party... Uh, you know, whatever it, you know, the personal qualities Jeremy Corbyn has is nowhere near being a, a challenge to government. My party is, is going to have a big struggle to get back from where it is. Uh, and the, the issue of accountability and effective opposition is absolutely crucial. I'm, I'm now, of course, out of Parliament, but I'm happily engaged with uh, other people, the Labour Party and my own party, trying to create common ground so that we do in future have effective opposition. The main challenge at the moment, of course, will be to have a common approach to the European Union, to keep us in the European Union. But I think when that referendum is passed, the issue will become absolutely salient about how do we get a sensible centre-left opposition to government. And that's going to involve parties working together. But, uh, but just parties working together or perhaps a new formation? Well, I think that's probably a bit over the horizon. I mean, I was part of the original SDP, which ultimately led to the Lib Dems. I think there are very mixed feelings about that. It, you know, we had a long period of Conservative government afterwards. I think the creation of new uh, parties, new uh, formations is very difficult in the UK political system. I think what we're looking at in the relatively short run is practical cooperation with people who have a common approach but happen to be in different parties. I think that's the realistic agenda. Always fascinating talking to you, Sir Vince. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank Sir Vince you. Cable there. And you too.